Good morning and thank you for joining us on Thriving on the Sun Coast and a very happy new year to all and welcome to 2017. Another year is in the record books. Also means we're another year older. We've talked about statistics of aging on our, in our community many times on the show, but what have we done to influence the direction of our needs in the community? Fortunately, there are some organizations that are being proactive and based on their diligent work, Sarasota has become the first community in Florida to be recognized as an age-friendly community by the World Health Organization. The fact that our city qualified for this global effort is a great honor and it's a big responsibility. Today you're going to find out what being an age-friendly community truly means for you and your family. With me today are two people I deeply admire. Both have been highly recognized as steadfast advocates for aging issues. Dr. Kathy Black is a professor of aging studies and social work at the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee. Dr. Black has obtained her PhD from the State University of New York in Albany. She has a master's degree in social work and gerontology from the University of Southern California. She also has a master's degree in public health. She is an initiative consultant for the Patterson Foundation for the Age-Friendly Sarasota. Dr. Black has nearly 40 years of experience in the field of aging as a researcher, educator, geriatric care manager, medical social worker, geriatric, and a geriatric nurse. She's con conducted over 100 presentations in state, local, and national, and international venues and author authored over 50 publications. And joining her is Bob Carter, who is a, whose professional background spans more than 40 years of organizational leadership. He's retired as the president and CEO of the Senior Friendship Centers after serving in this role for more than two decades. He's a leading advocate for older adults as well as a community leader, and Bob has led numerous regional statewide organizations as their board president. He was also the initial chairman of the Sarasota County, appointed to the Senior Advisory Council, and served as a delegate to the White House Conference on Aging. Bob was recently honored by the Friendship Centers with their first ever Senior Advocacy Award which will bear his name in future years. Well, I am honored to have you guys on the show um, and so excited because I've really been hearing about Age Friendly Sarasota. I know you guys have worked diligently on it. Tell us what Age Friendly Sarasota is all about. Well, Michael, thank you so much for having us. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, age Friendly Sarasota, as you said, we are Florida's first World Health Organization Age Friendly Community. And essentially, in 2005, the World Health Organization said, communities need to do better. We can make aging a better experience so that people thrive and look forward to their, their extended lifespans. And so a whole bunch of features in community life can be improved, and that's what this is about. Awesome. Um, you know, you guys have worked diligently about, you know, doing the research and what did it take to win this honor, this designation from the World Health Organization and maybe even tell us what the World Health Organization does. Well, that's really an interesting uh, thing. Uh, in order to apply to be a World Health Organization age-friendly community, it has to be applied for by a municipality. Mm -hmm. And so Sarasota County government is our municipal partner. Now we're also working with the municipalities within Venice, Northport, Longboat Key, and the city of Sarasota, but you have to, it has to be initiated by a municipality. So even though it uh, has the word Sarasota age friendly in it, is, is it expanded into the entire county? Yes, it is. It is Sarasota County, yes, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, clearly. I, I think just from, from a kind of a logo perspective, Sarasota as opposed to Sarasota County, but yeah. this, uh, this is all of uh, Sarasota. It incorporates all of the yeah, absolutely. The entire absolutely. county. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, so what is an age-friendly community? Well, an age-friendly community is one in which recognizes that people are aging, and it's at its basis preventative in that all, keeping people active, engaged, healthy, so that they can fully participate in social, civic, and economic life. And it includes promoting aging in a preventive way uh, throughout the life course. Uh, it's also recognizing that people do age with inevitable needs and providing assistance so that people can continue to live fully even though they may have broken a hip or have cataracts or any sorts of numbers of things that would happen to people as they age. And also at the end of life, it's living fully throughout a palliative end of life care. 
This, you've been speaking on aging issues, both of you, for many, many years um, and have done a lot of research. What, what are some of the important things to people and how does this initiative address some of the concerns? Well, I have to tell you, this work is very different than traditional aging work in that the World Health Organization intended for each community to look at their inherent assets, every community will differ, and also the aspirations of people who are aging. And when you look at most of the services that are provided to people, through funding streams and various mandates, it tends to focus on what people need and frankly the deficit model of getting older. This work is about aspirations and it's about what people want to live fully throughout their years. I think you touched on this, but this really does, this is not about elderly people, is it? It's about, it touches all of us, doesn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. It, it, it's about a, a community for all ages. And, and really, it's, it's future focused, but it also has its common sense roots. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, it, it makes so much sense in looking at, you know, we're dealing with now four decades of being an older adult or more. And so, but if you, fo if you, look at how you're going to deal with that. You're also looking at, for instance, sidewalks, something as sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It's good for somebody, uh, in a, a mother, babies in a stroller, mm -hmm. and it's good for older adults with wheelchairs, with walkers. So, so much of age-friendly has to deal with, with the entire lifespan. Uh, we don't have a lot of time left in this segment. We have about a minute. Tell us Let's start the conversation about you know, what did it take to qualify for this designation and what does it really mean to the people in the community? Well, uh, again, in order to apply, uh, there were 60 other World Health Organization age-friendly communities in the United States. We are Florida's first, and again, one of the issues is that it must be applied for by a municipality. So a government, either mayor or board of county commission, has to say, we want to do something about aging mm -hmm. in our community. And so that took some time to get the, the support of our, uh, of, of, our, of our county government to do that. Um, what it means for people here, first of all, they should take a lot of pride that we're the first. Yeah. Um, but this community is filled with such wonderful people and so many wonderful providers in aging, such as yourself and your wonderful organization. I need to cut you off. When we be back, we'll talk more about what aging friendly means to you. Stay with us. Is mom really taking her medications? A comfort keeper can ensure that your loved one gets their medications on time, providing peace of mind for families in need of flexible in-home care. Comfort keepers, let our family take care of yours. When a stroke or injury impacts your life, we're here to help you get it back. With our dedicated team of specialists, personalized treatment plans, the most inventive technologies, and a coordinated approach to recovery, this is more than just rehabilitation. This is a higher level of care. Let's face it, life happens, and the laws change daily. Attorney Joseph Land can help guide you with legal issues you may face while aging. Len Law has helped countless clients in Sarasota and Port Charlotte in assistance with guardianships, Medicaid planning, VA planning, estate planning, wills and trusts, probate, and Social Security disability claims. I'm Elder Law Attorney Joseph Land. At Len Law, seniors matter, your rights matter, and the legacy that you built matters. I'm Rob Wyatt, and I've been offering reverse mortgages in the state of Florida for over 21 years. If you are 62 or older, a reverse mortgage can allow you to access your home equity while staying in the comforts of your own home with no repayment obligations for the rest of your life. And you remain on title. Call us to learn how a reverse mortgage can provide you additional tax-free income to enjoy life now and create a peace of mind retirement for your future. Comfort Keepers can provide a variety of in-home services for your aging loved ones. We'll assess their needs and create a custom care plan that can change as their needs change. Comfort Keepers, keeping the comfort of home. The Harvey Center for Integrative Medicine is helping people every day to thrive and live healthy, vital lives. Our integrative approach combines conventional medicine with holistic and innovative therapies to help you achieve optimal function. Are you ready to function at 100% of your ability? Dr. Fred Harvey customizes tools and treatments to achieve optimal wellness at any age. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Fred Harvey. Do you want to feel vital, vibrant, and fully energized? If so, call our office to find out how. Welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Kathy Black and Bob Carter, Age Friendly Sarasota, the initiative. Before we went to break, we started talking about, you know, it sounds good in theory. We've talked about aging, aging, but what does it really mean for our community? What does it mean for the people living here? What does it mean for us as we get older? How are things going to be different or better or focused on what our needs are? Well, again, in the first few years of the project, we've been assessing our assets and the aspirations of what people want. So people have told us what's important in a variety of areas of life, and also um, they've also identified uh, things that they want us to know about as they look forward to their future years. And so uh, we believe that, and all the other age-friendly projects also, focus on multiple sectors of involvement. So that business plays a role, nonprofits play a role, people themselves play a role, government plays a role. And so in areas of life such as transportation, uh, housing, outdoor spaces and public buildings, civic engagement and social participation, communication and information, community supports, uh, in all of these areas, there's a role for all of us to make life better for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, for example, we've uncovered lots of exciting things. Sarasota County um, uh, recently approved a resolution for builders to build with universal design. And so we're in the process of helping them promote that because when people can remain in their homes uh, longer and, and more easily in their homes, that's good for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Bob, how do you how do you address that? What she was talking about? I, you know, in the last hundred years, we've added decades uh, to life, mm -hmm. to the average life. And uh, as as I mentioned earlier, when you when you're looking at potentially four decades of being an older adult, there are certain things that we have to uh, add to our community, certain amenities that we need to add. I think some of it is, and as Kathy and I have worked, for instance, going to uh, Sarasota Bradenton International Airport and, and talking with uh, Rick Piccolo there, we mm -hmm. learned about certain amenities for the mature traveler that uh, people might not even know about. The escalators, for instance. The escalators are set to a slower speed mm -hmm. uh, as, as, the, as they recognize the mature. And, they, and there are so many things. And as we're traveling around, we also realize that uh, this community is advanced in many respects for, for yeah. being yeah. age friendly. Uh, yeah. Some of it we haven't recognized or categorized as age friendly and, and some of it I think we need to amplify more and we need to let everyone know what's happening and also be sharing. I think there's so many people that are retired in this community that really need the purpose in their life and how do you see them being able to play a role in getting involved in this and making this the kind of community that benefits them and their peers? Well, you know, we did ask people and uh, what to you is an age-friendly community and what will you personally do? And so you're right, Michael, at an individual level, we can all be thinking of our neighbors. We can be doing thoughtful things, and that is one way to make it an age-friendly community. And this is what people said that they wanted in an age-friendly community, mm -hmm. being more neighborly right. and, more, and more thoughtful. Uh, so those are all helpful things to support people. And, and also, we've, we found the uh, level of volunteerism. While the state of Florida oh, does yeah. not do very very well yeah. with, with regards to what was the cap? Oh, uh, it was. It, we heard some dismal numbers. Mm -hmm. Florida ranks very poorly in all sorts of civic engagement measures, but I have to tell you, Sarasota County is the highest in the state. And Bob and I are surprised everywhere we're going. We're hearing about hundreds and thousands of volunteers, largely older, uh, people who are donating their time to causes and efforts that are meaningful to them. That's wonderful. Yeah. And along those lines, it takes a village, and you've got other partners, especially like the Patterson Foundation. You want to talk about who's kind of uh, marshalling this and, and helped uh, obtain this designation? Well, well, let me talk first about this is supported by the Patterson Foundation, and, and the Patterson Foundation is involved in multiple initiatives. Uh, and, and they deal with initiatives really focusing on issues that are national and global significance, but also making connection uh, locally. 
Uh, and, and the Patterson Foundation is about strengthening uh, communities, organizations, and individuals. So we're, uh, I think as Patterson looked at the Patterson Foundation looked at this, they, they understood the importance, and especially the fact that demographically, uh, one might say that uh, Sarasota County is somewhat the epicenter for the longevity revolution taking place globally. Yeah, it seems like based on the how you've hit the ground running and all the work that you've put into in the research, how has this affected, you know, global efforts? Well, one of the things that we've done is we decided, you know, out of all, there's over 300 now World Health Organization age family communities, and if you want to find out what's going on, you know, you end up, you know, scrolling through a large report, and so one of the things that we've done is created promising practices, and so we've taken a few of the very special, distinct uh, things we've been seeing here that are really making a difference in these areas, and we've shared them to, to the World Health Organization website so that they're shared in an international audience. Um, we're also sharing with our partners, ARP, uh, at a national level, and our state partners is um, the Florida Department of Elder Affairs, uh, as well as uh, I'm at USF and, and USF Tampa as a policy exchange center on aging, because there are policy implications of much of this work as well. It just seems to be, you know, such tied into the political process, which is always usually where things slow down. Uh, but it seems like you're getting a lot of positive uh, support in that area. And, and my response to that, Michael, is it's tied into governmental mandates and not political. As a matter of fact, aging is the one thing, <laughs> one of the we one things on. <laughs> we can all agree on. And it really brings people together. Everybody's aging, mm -hmm. has aging relatives, mm -hmm. will be aging. And it's one of those unifying pieces. And that holistic view, again, that's a TP, a Patterson Foundation model as well of the multi-sector involvement and very much a core aspect of making a successful age family community. There's, everybody's a stakeholder. There's a place for all of us to make a difference here. How businesses embrace this? Well, we're, we're, st we're starting on, on that. The, um, there has been established age-friendly uh, community business designations. And so, for example, when businesses do many no-cost ideas, such as increase your font size, improve your lighting, have bathrooms available, have seating available, those are things that businesses... Businesses want to know this. They do want to yeah, know that, and yeah. we want to share it with yeah. them. And there's some customer service angles. How do you treat people respectfully? In many cases, people just don't realize uh, we have to go to break right now and we get back to find out how, what age friendly means to you and how you can get involved. Stay with us. The Harvey Center for Integrative Medicine is helping people every day to thrive and live healthy, vital lives. Our integrative approach combines conventional medicine with holistic and innovative therapies to help you achieve optimal function. Are you ready to function at 100% of your ability? Dr. Fred Harvey customizes tools and treatments to achieve optimal wellness at any age. Hi, I'm Dr. Fred Harvey. Do you want to feel vital, vibrant, and fully energized? If so, call our office to find out how. With the help of Comfort Keepers, I'm keeping my mom healthy. I'm keeping dad on schedule. I'm keeping my mom happy. Comfort Keepers in-home professional caregivers can provide meal planning and preparation, health and wellness services, and personal care services through custom care plans that can change as needs change so your aging loved ones can stay happy and healthy in their own home. Comfort Keepers, keeping the comfort of home. Let's face it, life happens, and the laws change daily. Attorney Joseph Land can help guide you with legal issues you may face while aging. Land Law has helped countless clients in Sarasota and Port Charlotte in assistance with guardianships, Medicaid planning, VA planning, estate planning, wills and trusts, probate, and social security disability claims. I'm Elder Law Attorney Joseph Land. At Land Law, seniors matter, your rights matter, and the legacy that you built matters. I'm Rob Wyatt, and I've been offering reverse mortgages in the state of Florida for over 21 years. If you are 62 or older, a reverse mortgage can allow you to access your home equity while staying in the comforts of your own home with no repayment obligations for the rest of your life. And you remain on title. Call us to learn how a reverse mortgage can provide you additional tax-free income to enjoy life now and create a peace of mind retirement for your future. When a stroke or injury impacts your life, we're here to help you get it back. With our dedicated team of specialists, 
personalized treatment plans, the most inventive technologies, and a coordinated approach to recovery. This is more than just rehabilitation. This is a higher level of care. Welcome back. Sarasota is on the global stage thanks to the initiative Age Friendly Sarasota. I'm here with Dr. Kathy Black and Bob Carter. You know, designations are great, but people want to know what does it really mean? What does it, you know, what's, what's going to be different? So tell us a little bit about, you've done a ton of research, amazing job. Uh, I love your research. <laughs> Um, but you've learned a lot of really important things, people's feelings and where their struggles are. So tell us what you found out. I know you could spend the whole show on that, right. but. I'll try to be brief. Yeah. We heard from about 1,200 people in uh, focus groups throughout the county and also through surveys. Um, and we broke, uh, that's about 1,200 people and people were age 50 to 98. Uh, so we broke our findings down by boomer, who were 50 to 69 at the time, and 70 plus. And we did see some, um, some differences. Um, the boomers are much more aware that they're going to be living longer and are much more cost conscious. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, 70 plus, and these are just sort of global statements here, um, uh, and cost conscious also, um, but there was, uh, I think, more concern about uh, assistance and, um, and also safety concerns in that age group as well. Um, but for example, Michael, uh, you know, uh, we heard people want to be engaged. They recognize the benefits of staying involved cognitively, mm -hmm. socially, physically. Right. But uh, remember our community. We have a lot of people moving here from all over. So a lot of people said, for the newcomers, they don't know how to get started. They're, they're a little shy about getting started. Sure. Things. So we heard a lot about needing connectors for volunteering and for social activities. I um, think people would love to do that. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. uh, and we also, we heard a lot about people whose status change, uh, they become a widow and their world changes. And so people also need to reach out in special ways there. Um, we heard a lot about people's homes, universal design. They thought they purchased a home that had everything it's not, and now it's still not going to meet their needs. So it's seemingly in, in you know. But well, people do, majority of people want to stay in their own homes. And, oh, yes. But by being engaged in the community, it gives them that socialization that enables them to feel connected. It does. And, and let me just mention one last thing about the, the transportation. We heard so much about transportation. Mm -hmm. We heard a lot of people are very aware that they're, and we, li we outlive our ability to drive safely by about 10 years. And a lot of people are there. will have driverless cars soon. Well, you know, that's, that's on the horizon. And, and there's actually a lot of things on the horizon. I mean, we've got Uber in our community now. Yeah. Lyft is in our community. Yeah. Certainly ITN. We have a lot of other nonprofits providing transportation. And how about neighbors driving neighbors yeah. as an opportunity as well? People need to remain mobile or they start to um, stay inside. Right. The world becomes smaller. Right. And this work, Michael, is, is really preventative. If people stay engaged and active, we are actually, those are the root factors that lead to some of the problems that we later experience. Depression, isolation, subject to fraud, uh, you know, all those sorts of things. Yeah. Oh. There, there's five key words that the Patterson Foundation utilizes in their initiatives, and age-friendly fits right in these. And, and it's connect, learn, share. Um, Amplify. Yeah, well and strengthen. Uh, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. So, and, and yeah. so I, we have been with both the, uh, the survey, the focus groups, and also Kathy and I have been traveling around. We've talked to uh, every municipality, uh, every city manager, and, and what we're doing is we're, we're listening, and we're sharing, and we're connecting, and, and that's part of this. This is, this is long term. This isn't just Bob Carter and Kathy Black. This and this isn't just the Patterson Foundation. This is about engaging our community in becoming architects for their future. You know, it's really critical because we're all thinking about, hey, we're getting older, and what are we going to do? And we see how it's been handled with our parents and their parents. And, you know, we're all busy. And thank God organizations like yours are out there learning about the problem and really making a difference for our future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so we will all benefit. We all play a role and we will all benefit. So, you know, where do you think age friendly goes from here? 
Well, the way the process works for the WHO model is uh, we are still in our planning phase, but we've identified lots of, uh, I'm going to call them mini initiatives along the way. Uh, for example, um, the Florida Department of Elder Affairs is about to designate Sarasota County as a dementia-friendly community. So we will we will also work with them as they promote cognitive awareness and to help people of with cognitive abilities. We will also work with them about broader age friendliness, which is also focused on the built environment as well and, and, and physical access, as well as the interaction between people. Uh, so we, we, you know, we'll be joining in efforts like that. It's the, the WHO effort is a, a five-year effort, and it's laid out as a five-year effort. But really, uh, communities that, that become age-friendly, this is a forever mm -hmm. issue. Sure. And this is embedding age-friendly thoughts and, and, uh, and actions uh, for the future. Now that you've got sort of a roadmap, I mean, does that make it easier for uh, governments to help with funding of some of these initiatives? Well, you know, Michael, it's funny you say that a lot of people say, well, what's it going to cost? What's the money? In many cases, a lot of this is just educating people mm -hmm. and doing things differently, as I mentioned a moment ago about the, the increase your font size. There are a lot of no-cost ideas. Um, Age-friendly New York City realized that people wanted, older people wanted to swim. Well, they didn't want to swim with the boisterous, noisy children. Mm -hmm. They decided to create senior swim times so that the, well, the children at school and didn't cost a penny. So it's things like that, and so it's about doing things smarter Mm -hmm. and thinking differently about things. So again, when you build that house and you make that doorway 36 inches to accommodate that wheelchair down the road, no cost difference at the time of building, but a far better benefit later on. And it's that sort of thinking we want people to think about in all that they're doing. So with a minute left here, how can people get involved in Age Friendly and learn more about how, you know, what, what there is that they can be involved in? Well, we'd like to direct people to our website, agefriendlysarasota.org. Uh, we'd also encourage them to sign up for our newsletter uh, and follow us on Facebook and also on Twitter. And uh, they can call us or email us if they have any questions. And uh, we look forward to interacting. This is a community initiative. It belongs to the community. And we are just so proud to be part of this wonderful community. Well, you guys do an amazing job. And I love the effort that you are behind and bringing us into the next century here. And hopefully uh, it'll be a piece of cake for all of us. <laughs> so uh, thank you for all you do. Check out Age Friendly Sarasota on their website. Get involved. Give them a call. They would love to have your participation. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week on Thriving on the Sun Coast. Have a great new year. Um, Comfort keepers, cause there's no place quite like home. Call comfort keepers.